everyone. Today, I want to talk about my favorite reptilian porpoise, the ichthyosaur. I need to be honest. I haven't been giving this animal the respect it deserves. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the concept. A lizard dolphin? What's not to love? But beyond how they look, I never really thought much about them. In fact, my history with this animal can be summed up by this picture. Here we have a plesiosaur getting ready to gobble up a small fish. But wait, who's that in the background? Why, it's the star of today's video, the ichthyosaur. For many of us, this is our experience with these animals, because unfortunately, they've always sort of been in the backdrop. They're essentially used as filler for the other more popular sea creatures such as mosasaur and plesiosaur. Well, no more. Today is the day the ichthyosaur finally get their day in the sun. Or at least, a 10 minute video about why this little monster thinks they're cool. And trust me, these animals have their share of secrets. Ichthyosaurs went far beyond the other marine reptiles with their aquatic adaptations. And despite their typical appearances in literature, these animals would grow to become some of the most terrifying predators in our planet's history. But before we get to that, we first need to take a look back at the origins of this animal. Don't forget to hit that like button, and let's hop back 250 million years ago. Here we are in the- wait, where is everyone? That's right, this is the start of the Mesozoic Era. We just went through the worst extinction in our planet's history. You know what that means, it's time to get weird. The dramatic loss of life left us with several holes in our ecosystem, vacancies that needed to be filled. On land, this presented an opportunity for new players such as dinosaurs to emerge and eventually dominate their environment. In the oceans, we saw the rise of marine reptiles, including my personal favorite, the Mosasaur. However, this is where I made the mistake of overlooking one of the Ichthyosaur's greatest achievements, its body. Body yaddy yaddy yaddy. Let me explain. Evolution doesn't have goals, but the further an animal goes to adopt to its ecosystem, the more we are fascinated by the changes in its lineage, which might just explain another hobby of mine. When it comes to living on land, it's not hard to find several different species with commitment issues. As these animals slowly transitioned to an aquatic lifestyle, we can see the dramatic changes in their anatomy. This alone is an impressive feat. However, the ichthyosaur will go further down this road than any other marine reptile. There's a reason their name means fish lizard. These animals took evolution to the extreme, and as we take a look at their bodies, things only get weirder from there. Okay, so if we want to live in the ocean, what's the first thing we need to do? We have to get rid of these things, our hands. They create a lot of drag and we want to be as streamlined as possible for moving through the water. As you can probably imagine, this doesn't happen overnight and there's a natural transition from limb to fin. This is how the Mosasaur did it. Their ancestors had five fingers and toes with claws at the end that helped them perform on land. Over time, these limbs were expanded and digits were added to create the structure of the flipper. We can see the same evolutionary process in the plesiosaur whose flippers acted like paddles for propulsion. All of this makes sense, and naturally we expect to see the same thing when it comes to the ichthyosaur, with their fingers and toes slowly transitioning to, oh dear. What the heck is that? This isn't a flipper. This is a cobblestone road. How is this even a thing? Well, despite the chaos, we can still make out one, two, five, six, seven, ten? This animal has ten fingers and toes? Is this normal? I'm sure there's some examples, but animals typically don't add extra limbs. It's not unheard of, but I mean, just look at this thing. This isn't a flipper, it's an Excel spreadsheet. What else does it have? Hold on, let me zoom out a bit so we can- Um, what's that? I'm glad you asked. This is what's known as a scolartic ring. It's a bone that resides inside the eye and provides structure for the eyeball. Even though you humans don't have them, they're pretty common in fish and reptiles. The reason it's so noticeable here is because of its massive size. Ichthyosaurus had one of the largest eyeballs in the animal kingdom, with some species having eyes slightly smaller than that of a basketball. Or a football for my international viewers. Large eyes help with hunting in low light, and it's one of the reasons we suspect the ichthyosaur were hunting cephalopods at very low depths. We also see evidence of this based on fossilized remains of small squid hooks found in the remains of ichthyosaur fossils. But that's not the only evidence that supports the idea that these animals were divers. Their skeletons also have a story to tell. When analyzing ichthyosaur remains, paleontologists noticed several other fossils had small tears on them. These small gashes are similar to the injuries found in bones when they experience decompression sickness. When bodies undergo changes in pressure such as diving below the water, the amount of nitrogen in our blood also increases. Animals with lungs really like oxygen, and they can't do very much with all that extra nitrogen meaning all that nitrogen has a lot of free time to do damage to different parts of the body. This is an oversimplification, but long story short, the damage caused by decompression sickness can show up later in the bones of the animals who experienced it, which is exactly what we see in the bones of ichthyosaur. 
This means that similar to modern sperm whales, ichthyosaurs likely spent a long time at the bottomless depths hunting for food. But let's be honest, hunting in deep water isn't what gets you street cred. Ask yourself, what makes animals such as Megalodon and Mosasaur fan favorites? Hmm, I wonder what it could be. We all love giants, and the extreme sizes of ancient super predators captivates our imagination. This is a big reason why I think the ichthyosaur haven't made headlines yet. And it's all his fault. This is ichthyosaurus. I said, this is ichthyosaurus. I know, that's what we're talking about. <sighs> Names are hard. Ichthyosaurs, or ichthyosauria, is a group that contains several different families, one of which is called ichthyosaurus, who is often the archetype for all ichthyosaurs. This is partly due to the size of ichthyosaurus, coming in at 2 to 3 meters or 6 to 10 feet, slightly larger than the average dolphin who they're often compared to. Put simply, they look like dolphins, so we tend to think them as slightly larger reptilian versions of dolphins. Or at least, that's what I did before making this video. However, ichthyosaurs were incredibly diverse, with some measuring around 1 meter, and others, what on earth is that? This is Shonisaurus, one of the largest species of ichthyosaur coming in at around 15 meters, making it slightly shorter than the largest species of Mosasaur, and well below the size of Megalodon. However, you'll notice I said one of the largest. There is also Himalayasaurus, who is even larger, as well as, holy guacamole, what's that? This beefcake is Asikinesis, whose name rolls off the tongue. The S stands for Shonisaurus, or maybe Shasasaurus. I couldn't really tell in my research. I don't care what you call it, this thing is enormous. It really is. In fact, here it is next to Megalodon, the largest predator to ever live. Since we don't have a complete skeleton, getting an accurate estimate of its size is difficult. Nevertheless, the point I'm trying to make is that when we think of ichthyosaurs, we shouldn't only think of the smaller, dolphin-like variations. Some of them were absolute super predators. But it's not just me who didn't give these animals the respect they deserved. Until recently, the Shonisaurus was depicted like this. What the? Did it lose its dentures or something? Why would paleontologists assume this animal didn't have teeth? Well, we didn't find any. And you have to remember, teeth tend to preserve pretty well, so not finding them is good evidence that suggests they might not have been there at all. Also, when you look at other large marine animals such as some species of whales, many of them don't have traditional teeth. Several aquatic predators use a method of eating called suction feeding, where animals rapidly open their mouth to create suction and slurp up their prey which unfortunately makes Shonisaurus much less intimidating. Unless, <gasps> teeth! That's right. As mentioned earlier, some of the recent findings have completely reshaped our understanding of this creature, including its dental plant. Rather than being the Mesozoic equivalent of a humpback whale, Shonisaurus had teeth like railroad spikes, making it one of the most terrifying predators to ever exist in the Earth's oceans. And these colossal titans aren't the only ichthyosaurs that break away from the traditional mold. Their lineage is full of wacky and interesting designs, with some resembling a modern-day swordfish and others looking much more reptilian. But my personal favorite just might be these guys. Look at them! They're like little lizard seals! How cool is that? We even think these animals might be the early origins of ichthyosaurs. However, that process is still in work, so I'm not sure they can be classified as ichthyosaurs. But either way, I love the idea of a small lizard seal, and I would really love to have it as a pet. I would give it treats and teach it tricks and snap out of it! Whoops. Moving on. The variety of ichthyosaur species allowed them to dominate the Earth's oceans for much of the Triassic and Jurassic periods. They even managed to survive the late Triassic extinction, a period where Mother Nature decided to embrace Murphy's Law. And our planet was hit with a variety of environmental disasters such as climate change, volcanic eruptions, and changes in sea levels. This animal was a survivor, and it wasn't until the end of the Mesozoic, a period known as the Cretaceous, that ichthyosaurs finally met their demise. Oh! I know this one! The end of Cretaceous, that's when that asteroid hit! The one that killed all the dinosaurs! And my homeboy Mosasaur! It got them too, huh? Nope. Ichthyosaurs must have had some insider knowledge, because they came in immediately after the PT extinction, the worst extinction in our planet's history, took over the Earth's oceans, only to dip out shortly before arguably the most well-known extinction event, the KT extinction, ravaged our planet. It's pretty suspicious if you ask me. Let me guess, they couldn't hang with the Mosasaur, and thus they were outcompeted. That's right, is what I would have said before researching this video. It turns out Mosasaur might have made their debut a few million years after the ichthyosaurs were thought to have gone extinct. Which means, wait, what are you doing? Burning evidence? You tell those people the truth. But Mos- Tell them. Tell them? Okay, this means that the prominent rise of Mosasaur might not have been the result of them being the world's greatest predator, 
but instead could simply be the result of ichthyosaurs bowing out and leaving room for them to take over in their absence. It's possible that had ichthyosaurs not died out, Mosasaur never would have been able to fill their role and become the super predators of the Cretaceous. So wait, then how did the ichthyosaurs die out? If they missed the great extinction event at the end of the Mesozoic, and they weren't all competed by other animals such as Mosasaur, what happened to them? Well, it's still a bit of a mystery, but the current idea is that it wasn't simply one event that led to their demise. The Cretaceous period was a volatile time for our planet's oceans, and several creatures went extinct during this time. For ichthyosaurs, this meant that if you were specialized for hunting one of these animals, you were kind of out of a job. When this happens, the species becomes less diverse and more susceptible to further changes in their environment, which, you guessed it, continue to be a big problem. Think of it this way. You love eating cake, and over millions of years, you develop the perfect fork for scarfing down those delicious layers. But all of a sudden, no more cake! You have to find something else to eat, and the only thing available is soup. Now, I'm not knocking soup, but if you're trying to eat soup using a fork, you're not going to have a good time. This is what happened to ichthyosaurs who evolved sharp, strong teeth for crushing ammonites and large eyes for hunting squid in the deep depths. These creatures, along with several species of plankton, were victims of the environmental changes that plagued the oceans throughout the Cretaceous period, leaving this ferocious predator without any cake. The success of ichthyosaurs cannot be understated. With a lineage of over 160 million years, they are one of the planet's most successful creatures. But unfortunately, we're at a- no we're not! We still have to talk about babies! That's right, I almost forgot about that. Thanks to their dominance, ichthyosaur fossils have been found all over the world. But something surprised me. We talked a bit about live birth with Mosasaur, but the evidence for that was around its ancestors. We really can't say for sure. To do that, we would have to find several preserved pregnancies. I'm guessing you can already see where this is going. And you're wrong. We didn't find a fossilized pregnant ichthyosaur. We found several, and not just of ichthyosaurs. While their lineage is still a bit fuzzy, Animals we expect to be early ichthyosaurs have also been found with fossilized pregnancies, and it's their fossils I want to talk about today. Many of these fossils have been found with preserved pregnancies with their pups coming out head first, which might imply a terrestrial origin for life birth among these animals. Why is that? Because animals with lungs really like air, and being born can take a while, so if you come out head first, you have to hold your breath until you can take your first gasp of air which isn't the best idea for survival. While the idea of terrestrial birth being the precursor to marine reptiles giving live birth is still highly debated, it does appear later on these animals were giving birth tail first, which makes more sense for giving birth underwater. Throughout the Mesozoic, marine reptiles dominated the Earth's oceans, but on land, the planet was dominated by the most famous animals to ever live, the dinosaurs, and one of them has a story for us. But unfortunately, now we're really out of time, so I guess we'll have to leave the story of my favorite T-Rex for another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to bring snacks.